Hi there! Now keep in mind that suicide is always a permanent solution, yet only around 1 in 500 people who committed suicide had a permanent problem. The rest felt overwhelmed by a temporary problem. So here are temporary problems that never justify suicide. Getting fired, losing your home, failing school, public humiliation, or getting dumped by a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, or love interest. Here's a permanent problem, but it never in a million years justifies suicide. Permanent lifetime rejection by the opposite sex. Not only have I been permanently rejected by single women, I've been permanently rejected by the whole world. Yet I intend to live to be 100. Consider the song, Don't Try Suicide by Queen. It goes, Don't try suicide. Nobody's worth it. Don't try suicide. Nobody cares. Don't try suicide. Nobody gives a damn. Other problems which could be permanent are imprisonment, a lifetime in, in prison, or deep poverty. Many people in such situations, however, were able to live fulfilling lives. Consider Christian scripture, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. <clears throat> and having food and clothing, let us be there with content. End quote. And never in a million years even contemplate suicide because of being involved in a sexual scandal, no matter how public, no matter how um, so-called perverted, and even if you went to, to prison for it. Men's sexuality sometimes goes hay haywire. In those cases, don't care what people think. Just try not to repeat the behavior. Consider that suicide attempts usually fail. Kevin Hines jumped off San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. Immediately after he began to fall, he realized he didn't want to die. Upon hitting the water, he felt unimaginable pain. He went on to write, cracked, not broken, surviving and thriving after a suicide attempt. Quoting a man who used a 357 Magnum revolver and lived. I placed a gun to my head. Then I remember a tremendous expo explosion of lights like fireworks. Thus did the pain be become glorious. An army rallied to the side of death to help destroy my life, which I could feel leaving my body with each rushing, rushing surge of blood. I was engulfed in total darkness. The right thing to do is to be extra supportive of genders and races that are more prone to suicide. So know that worldwide, males commit suicide three times more frequently than females. That's 200% more frequently. Out of 170 countries, the female suicide rate is higher in only four countries. See list of countries by suicide rate on Wikipedia. And the high rate of female suicide attempts is trumped by quasi-suicidal behavior, which males engage in far more frequently. Risky behavior and such. And whites commit suicide three times more frequently than non-whites. That's also 200% more frequently. See Suicide Prevention Resource Center Racial and Ethnic Disparities on the Web. These statistics reveal who is truly oppressed. Drug addiction is a big factor in suicide, which can be readily controlled. Note that there are drugs that no human alive is mentally or physically able to resist being addicted to. And though illicit drugs initially uh, give uh, great pleasure, eventually they would no longer do so, and you'd simply need them just to feel normal. Without taking them, you'd, you'd feel quite depressed. Eventually, even with the drugs, you'd be depressed, and without them, extremely depressed. Uh, hence the high suicide rate connected with drug addiction. Therefore, if you've never tried hard drugs before, never try them. If you are addicted, get help immediately. If you know someone else who's addicted, do everything you can to get them help. Going to a better place right after death should never be motivation for suicide, since it's evident from a Christian standpoint that all that happens when we die is that our spirit leaves our body. I explained this in some other videos. And since God authored our lives, we don't have a right to take our lives without a good reason. He expects us to make the most of the lives that are really his, which we are merely the stewards of. As for re reincarnation, consider the book Reincarnation Refuted, Evidence, Logic, and Common Sense by Stephen Blake. 
Yet consider that the idea of everybody automatically being damned or lost because of their suicide is complete fiction and has no biblical basis. Actually, the Bible mentions those who committed suicide and honors them as people of God, with the exception of Judas Iscariot. And the early church fathers commended those who committed suicide while under severe persecution, were, were there a situation where there's no way out, uh, which would have re resulted in extreme and permanent uh, desecration of their physical bodies and honor. So some reasons which would justify suicide uh, are becoming a quad quadriplegic with no hope of recovery, being held in a torture chamber with no hope of rescue, or having a permanent physical ailment that causes constant excruciating pain. Another reason would be if you are addicted to sadistic murder. Your suicide would then, in that extreme case, do society a favor. But before doing anything, such people uh, must make sure that they're right with God beforehand. And such people should first consult a close friend and a medical expert beforehand. This would help eliminate reasons based on mere emotionality and would guide the person into the proper method if appropriate. And again, there's rare cases where even quadriplegics want to keep on living and they, they can somehow contribute. So, so think of these things before any, any rash decisions. Um, but again, like I said, very few suicides are ever justified. Maybe only one in 500 or one in 5, 000, a thousand or less. And again, no temporary problem ever justifies uh, this uh, permanent solution. Now, there are also quasi-suicidal -su behaviors, as I mentioned before. This beha is behavior that puts you at risk of dying prematurely or permanently damaging your health. Some examples are being in a gang, smoking, drinking in while driving, doing crazy stunts, and riding a motorcycle. Even riding with a helmet is far more risky than driving a car. Again, God expects us to be the best stewards of our lone bodies that we can be, which bodies are intended to be temples of the Holy Spirit. I should close this video with a prayer. Pray with me if you, if you would like. Heavenly Father, I beg you to grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.